I, I don't think I really need him here to explain this. Um, to do complicated tricks, there's a procedure called shaping. And I'm going to try and just do away with terminology. It's You can't get them to run and jump through a hoop right away. You have to go step by step. And the way you do that, like if you want a rabbit to play with a ball, at first you reward them or make a clicker sound. You can use an actual clicker. You can buy them online. They're probably like two bucks. I just don't like that noise is so loud and annoying and I think rabbits have even more sensitive ears than mine and I don't always have it with me so that's why I use the kissy sound but um at first you can reward them just for touching the ball every time they touch the ball they get rewarded and that kind of naturally progresses to the ball moving or if if you're having trouble with it only reward them when they do move the ball stop rewarding for just touching it and reward when they move it like his tricks now I probably wouldn't reward him or make the sound for just touching something because he knows the tricks now and so I'll reward him when he does them and he knows that he knows how to do them and he does his tricks constantly now like he I I'm pretty relaxed with him I'm not trying to train him to do something specific it's just kind of a fun activity it's maybe as much for his benefit as for my own because it keeps him mentally active and I know that for health reasons that will keep him healthier there's all kinds of data showing that the elderly fare so much better when they play chess or dance or have conversations there's all this data about mental activity being healthy and rabbits are fragile creatures they die very easily i see so many more rabbits dying at the age of one or two years old than dying after the age of five on the comments i see on rabbit groups and i don't want him to die at one or two i want him to be able to live as long as possible and as healthy as possible and so I feel like him being engaged in doing things is healthy for him because depression is a real thing for any animal humans included and depression isn't necessarily an emotion depression means less active more sleeping and um, slower metabolism and rabbits die mostly from metabolic reasons. The GI stasis is the number one cause of death in a rabbit, and that is purely metabolic. How fast their food moves from their mouth to their behind, that is their gastrointestinal transit rate, or whatever it's called. You want to keep them digesting. You want to keep things moving through them. Otherwise, they just curl up and die and um so i i like to see him active and i taught him to do some little things and it turned out to be really easy and then i saw some cute videos like i saw someone had a cute video of a rabbit playing a drum and i said wow that's cool and also it's a natural thing for a rabbit to do to to dig like the only things they'll do with their paws are basically dig, attack things. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll box you. Have you ever had a rabbit box you? Once in a while, I'll see him box me when he's pissed. It's usually if I'm touching one of his favorite new toys, he's like, get away from my toy. <laughs> and he'll run up and bop me with his nose or <laughs> his paws. He's like, you're not allowed to play with that. When he gets something new that he really likes, uh, he, he might be a little bit possessive of it. And that's fine. And um, animals' natural tendencies are part of what I wanted to discuss. I was going to make another video, but uh, put it in in one video, I guess. Um, they found that like you can't train animals to do certain things because they have natural ways of doing them. Like you can't train a rabbit to hold things with its paws; they just don't do that. 
Raccoons, yeah, they'll hold things all the time. You know, squirrels, lots of little rodents hold things. Rabbits do not do that anywhere. The only thing they will ever do is they'll claw some branches down and eat them. And he'll claw hay out of his thing and eat it. But that clawing thing made it really easy to teach him to play the drum. I, I got him the drum and it was under 30 seconds and he played the drum and was like, here, dig this thing. And he's like, I'll dig it all day if you're giving me food, baby. You know, obviously I'm treating him for touching it and then touching it with his paws. And then I, th I think I showed him once. I, I can't even remember. He just took to it so fast. And uh, I'm going to get him a little toy piano now too. Because I think that'll be the same thing. Because he'll be like, bingle, bingle, bingle on the piano. And he'll love it. He loves stuff that makes noise. So anyway, um, I was going to talk about shaping. That just means, you know, get them started in the right direction. And then you you can show them things. And some stuff maybe is hard. Like, um, I tried to teach him to always go in his pineapple. He's got a little pineapple bed that's, you know, it's a pineapple with a bed inside. And I wanted him to go in there when I sang the SpongeBob song. And it didn't work. Like, he doesn't recognize the song. I thought he might recognize me doing the voice. I'd, I'd do the pirate voice or whatever. It's, hey, kids, what time is it? Who lives in a pineapple? Uh, he, he doesn't recognize the different timbre of my voice. He doesn't recognize the words. He would go in there when he saw me stick the food in there, and that was it. So that, that trick was a big fail. <coughs> I thought it would be funny if he always ran in his pineapple when I sang the, the song, but yeah, so much for that. But he plays the drum. Um, he, he'll fetch things when I say bring it here. I mean, we've both gotten kind of bored with bring it here by now. He's bringing stuff all day for a while. It's just like whenever I'd be sitting here in his area, he he would throw things off the couch and then he'd bring them back because every time he gets he gets rewarded and that's fine. You know, I, I know that he needs a certain amount of pellets per day anyhow. I just give him pellets one by one as rewards rather than just give him the whole bowl full. And I probably should have explained that earlier, but yeah, I, I stopped giving him pellets in a bowl, and now pellets are treats, and the, they're a reward for doing a trick. So every time he would bring something here, I would say, Sweet Bunny, bring it here, and uh, I'd get him one, or at first I was giving him multiple ones. I've got little bowls. They're actually lids to... Uh, to uh, pill bottles and I would put like two or three treats in here and I'd give him the whole bowl of treats and I'll still do that if he does something really impressive I'll grab the whole bowl and I'll give it to him and he'll remember that <laughs> he'll be like oh that's when I got all those uh those pellets at once and he'll want to repeat that so anyway that's uh shaping and there's some stuff that they'll do easily there's some stuff that they'll do with work and then there's some stuff they won't do but it's not that hard in my experience i i think different rabbits have different intelligence levels they say intelligence is the most variable trait in humans like I don't know how you can say it's the most variable because our scale for measuring it is very arbitrary. It's we make a bell curve. We have a bunch of people take a test, and uh, the the most people get the score that's a hundred IQ. That's the way they do IQ. It's not based. It's not related to anything. It's related to humans. So you can't really compare it to height. But anyway, they say it's the most variable trait in in humans. And I would guess that they have some reason for saying that that I probably don't understand. Um, but it would probably um, port to other animals, too, that there's some extreme variability between smart and stupid animals. I grew up on a farm, and I can definitely recall some stupid animals. Now that I think about it, some animals were just thick. And there would be other animals of the same species that were quite intelligent, too. So you, you can see that. And I think I've been told that his breed is fairly um, 
active, intelligent, and affectionate. He's a mini Rex, I, I think. I mean, he looks like a mini Rex. He might not be purebred, or he might be. But anyway, um, you know, maybe some other ones are, are kind of like, uh, um, I, I think boxers are supposed to be kind of dumb. I don't know. I, I never had a boxer. Boxers are certainly interesting in any case. So that's that's about it. I mean, you can see some of the tricks he does. I've got other videos. Um, they're not all up on YouTube, but I will put them up, and I'll just put them up. I, I try to put out a video every day. Um, that way there's always crap to look at, and I've got a bunch of old videos of him doing his tricks, and there's some tricks that maybe I don't have one of, but I'll just make a, a quick video to, to demonstrate it. And he, he did bring it here while I was uh, making this video, but you couldn't see it because he was out of frame. Um, there's a couple other things I can mention. Oh, language. The language you use, it, it seems to be just um, common sense, but consistency. I want him to know when he's done something good, so I use the kiss sound. When I want to say something affectionate to him, I say sweet, sweet, sweet he knows what that means by now. I don't know exactly what it means in his head, but I always say that when he's being nice, I'm being nice to him, I pet him. I say, sweet, sweet, sweet. And that's consistent. And Sweet Bunny is also consistent. He probably thinks of his own name um, as much being Bunny as Moose. You know, if I had multiple rabbits, I'd probably have to differentiate a bit better. Um, the trick names are always the same and sometimes I will th there's one in particular it's um pick you up one of the first things I taught him was pick you up because I once he got out outdoors he jumped through the fence of the little area I made for him and I don't want him to run off because I'm in a farm area there's no fences he could run for miles if he tried to run from me, I'd never be able to catch him. So I want him to be handleable. And so pick you up is one of the first ones I taught him. And that one I have to kind of give a signal. And at this point, he's pretty good. He understands, he knows what it means. And he want, if he wants to or consents to being picked up, he kind of hunches up like this. That means he's ready to be picked up. And if he doesn't want to be picked up, he'll run away usually, or he'll at least run a few steps. And that tells me that he doesn't want it. But he knows, because the language is consistent, that that's what I want to do. And also, when I pick him up, I try to make a link between that and getting rewarded. I'll say, sweet bunny, pick you up treats. Pick you up treats. And so I'll bring him, I'll carry him, and get him some treats and give them to him. So that gives him a reason to want to be picked up instead of, you know, just um, being willing to do it. Another reason I'll pick him up is we, we play a game where I hide treats around the room. And there's a couple places he can get to on his own, but they're a little bit complicated to get to. There's one he has to, um, well, I'm not going to explain it all, but it, to get up onto this particular area, sometimes he prefers for me to pick him up. And so I just say, pick you up, pick you up. And I think he understands that there's more treats in the game. There's like 50 places I put a little treat. And he um, <coughs> he will go and find most of them. And then the ones that are left, I'll help him find. Sometimes I'll pick him up and place them on the box up high where he can get them without him having to make the effort of climbing up there on his own so this is a pretty long video um but i guess you probably would watch it if you're trying to train your bunny um have fun